This is the Life Wisdom Conference. We are on the third episode. Last two weeks, we started the recap of the first three episodes. We did the recap of the first episode where we talked about Shatawale and the wisdom of association. And last week, we talked about COVID-19 and the wisdom of strategic centering. Today, we have another important wisdom which to learn from hawkers. So today we are looking at hawkers and the wisdom of adaptability. Hawkers and the wisdom of adaptability. And I like to term it the all weather syndrome. Actually, it's not a syndrome. I, I think I should get a better name for it. But all weather, that's what I call it. I call it all weather. You soon understand what I mean by all weather. And like I said earlier, this is the third episode, a recap. I've said this in previous episodes that I already did the first three episodes one was done in the first the the headquarter of last year. The second one was done in the last quarter, and the third one was done in the first quarter this year around March. And I'll be moving to the fourth episode in this second quarter, somewhere next month or next two months. The dates will be out soon. Wisdom Conference is a quarterly conference. It's done once in every quarter of a year. And today we are doing the recap. Now I was taking it on a very low scale where I was taking it to just a certain group of people, but I realized that this is wisdom that the world needs to hear. This is wisdom that the world needs to succeed and I shouldn't keep it to some few people. I should open it up so that them that are really interested and are ready and passionate about success, ready to succeed, will partake. So your presence here, I don't take it lightly. And a man of vision always sees ahead. You can see that there are seven participants. I know that in the next three, four years, We'll, we'll be holding and we'll have close to 1,000 participants virtually. This conference is going to be virtual, it's going to remain virtual because the Lord is going to bless all of us. We're going to move into different parts of the world, excelling in all that we are going to do. And we will not have that luxury to meet together at a particular place. So we will we'll sit at wherever we are. Some people will be at Dubai, some people will be at Texas, some people will be in California, some people will be, well, some people will also be in Ghana doing very good. Some people will be, you know, around the world, you'll be in China, you'll be in Australia, different places, Canada. And then we will be meeting virtually. So wisdom conference to be virtual, there's an early meeting once in every quarter of a year. So that's like four times in a year. Now, Wisdom Conference, there's always a particular scripture. I, and I always say this, that I am a person of it. In as much as Wisdom Conference is open to all kinds of people, in my faith, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus. And he has said something in our holy book, the Holy Bible, Luke chapter 16, verse eight. And he was talking about a particular manager who was very dishonest, but he recommended that we learn from this dishonest manager. Not that we learn his attitude of dishonesty, but we learn the wisdom of how he managed to build a life of success for himself, even though he anticipated, even though he anticipated that his downfall coming. And this scripture so much fits with today's 
topic of adaptability. This guy, knowing what was coming, put certain measures in place to be able to live and not suffer, to be able to succeed even when he was he sucked. We'll be going into the details of that. All right. So I, the scripture is there in all my slides and not, I mean, every episode. And it is there to keep us alert that we can learn from anything. We can learn wisdom from anything. If you are a believer in your Bible, it is there that we should even go to the ants. We can learn wisdom even from an ant. So open up your hearts, open up your minds, and let's go to the streets and learn from hawkers today on adaptability. All right. So our wisdom model for this episode is for our hawkers. Now, the word hawkers itself is not actually the word I wanted to use, but for the lack of a better word, that is why I choose hawkers. Now, in the picture you see there, these are kind of market sellers. Some of them sell by the street, some of them sell in the market, but still by the street and all that. And we are, these people are, we are not learning their, their lifestyle generally, no. There's a, 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 a particular trait of them that we can pick wisdom from. That's what we are looking at. And that is always what Wisdom Conference seeks to do. Wisdom Conference does not seek to praise anybody or anything or, or to cause us to learn or pick up everything from something, no. Last time we were looking at Shatawali, we were not looking at his lifestyle or anything. We we're looking at how we can learn the wisdom of association from Shatawali. We we're looking last time also at COVID-19. We we're not looking or praising COVID-19, no. We're looking at how we can learn the wisdom of strategic centering and other wise things from COVID-19. Today, we are looking at focus. So we are not learning to be poor or to be sitting at the streets and doing the things they are doing, no. But we want to learn the wisdom of adaptability. Now, the reason why I put apparent success is because uh, generally, we might not really say that they are, in quotes, very much successful in life because some of them are really struggling. Okay, that's why I put apparent success. But the success here, you soon understand why I say they are successful in a way because of what they do. Okay, so they, their success is based on how much they persevere and how adaptable they are. Okay, now, our first lesson on this wisdom of adaptability. When we say someone is adaptable, something is adaptable, what does it mean? Adaptability from the dictionary simply has to do with the ability to change, okay? To fit certain changed circumstances or the ability to be changed to fit um, change circumstances. So the ability, for example, if it is raining, if you have always been in the sun and it immediately starts raining, something has changed from sunshine to rainfall. How can you change in accordance to fit? It's not just about changing. Your change must fit the circumstance. That is what we refer to as adaptability. Why must we be adaptable, okay? Life is full of vicissitudes. If I say vicissitudes, I mean ups and downs. You are not totally in control of everything in your life. You are in control of your life, but certain times you'll be hit by certain things and you will not have the, the, the stay or the control to prevent that thing from hitting you. And sometimes you might be hit down. You might even be hit close to destruction. Okay. But adaptability 
makes it necessary. I mean, these, these, sorry, these ups and downs in life that I call vicissitudes, they make adaptability necessary in order for you to succeed. Because if you are hit down and you are not, if you are hit and you are not adaptable, okay, you don't have that ability to change, to fit the circumstance that you have been hit by or the circumstance that you have met, you will not be able to succeed. You can't keep going the way you were going. You have to change to fit the situation in order to succeed, okay? Now you see a picture there of people selling foods. I believe everybody here, even though some of us are not in Ghana, but in one way or the other, you, would have, you, you were in Ghana before you went wherever you are now. So you know FOS. Now FOS, these sellers, they are some of the most adaptable people I have met or I've seen. And the Lord was showing me wisdom in these, how these people work. How are they adaptable? If your mother or your father has a store, <laughs> you always see these people in front there. Or even if you don't have a store, if you go to the markets, you always see these people sitting or standing. They will set up their tents in front there on the road. And they are, even though they are illegal and all that, that's what I'm saying. We are not learning those bad aspects of them, no. We are, we are picking a particular wisdom from it. They come and then they spread their things there. Let KME or AME or whatever AME come and sack them. The next minute, they will be back. Let them come and steal their, their, their clothes, their goods, their item, and burn them. The next 30 minutes to one hour, you see them there again. They will be there. You see, that's one of the things that has made it very hard for these authorities to work. Because immediately you clear them. When you leave, they will be back. Immediately you clear them. When you leave, they will be back. Now, the, the one that struck me most was, now if you look, I don't know if you can see very well, but you just, don't worry. There was a time, even on the road, they were digging to lay some huge pipes. And they dug along the side where these people used to put, spread their rubbers and put their clothes on to sell and their goods. And can you imagine that when their space was taken, they actually came to lay the rubber on what they've dug. <laughs> They keep like they they are determined by all means to sell. Like they will find a way to get a place to sell. That is what I'm I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. I'll come back to this matter quite soon. The second lesson I want to talk about is the wisdom of caucus. Now I want to go a little into this matter. Like I said earlier, I'm a person of faith. And whilst I was working on this wisdom series, something struck me in our holy book. In Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 9, something is written there. It says that the old men of Gebal which is a city at the north side of Sidon, okay? And it's skilled and wise men in you, talking about a particular town, a different town, okay? So it's the old men of Gebal and it's skilled and wise men who were inside you were your caucus, okay? The spelling of caucus there is just um, an American variant of what I have here, okay? All the ships, of the sea with their mariners were in you to deal with your merchandise and your trading. Now my 
emphasis is not on the second part. My emphasis is on the side that I said, the old men of Gebal and its skilled and wise men in you were your caucus. It takes skill and wisdom to be a corker. Now, what is a corker? A corker is a waterproof filler or sealant that is used in usually building of ships or repairing ships to make the ships watertight, to make the ships waterproof, like water cannot enter into any part of it. So on your right, you see some olden day ship being there or boat and be just below, you see something that is there. That is a corker. That's the sealer, waterproof filler or sealant that they use. So the men working there, they name themselves, they are called caucus. And the people, because they are repairing the ship, they are making it watertight or they are building, okay, to make it watertight, making it waterproof, okay, be able to withstand water using what is also called a corker. And the work, when you are doing it, it's called caulking. How does this relate to what I am talking about in caucus and adaptability? Now, if you understand the characteristics of a corker, okay, you, you come to realize that corker, okay, or corker has ability to withstand, even though it's usually water in this case, but in my case, with what I want to talk about, it has the ability to withstand all forms of circumstances. That is the first point that I, I want you to get with respect to how adaptability relates to talking. Adaptability builds in you the ability to withstand anything that comes your way. Okay. I hope you are following me clearly. If you are following me, just let me know in the chat right now. Talk, it gives you the ability to withstand. So if we look at the um, these street hawkers and market sellers and all these people that I'm, I'm referring specifically to those who sell on the floor, actually, those people. You, you see that no amount of stress, no amount of torture from the government is able to get these people out because they are determined to sell whatever they came to sell. Okay, they are determined to get whatever amount of money that they came there to get. That is what forking does when it comes to adaptability, okay? When you learn to adapt, you, 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 you gain that ability to withstand. Now, you see the, a, a quote of the famous Charles Darwin. If you, are, if you are a science, if you were a science student, you should have heard of Charles Darwin and his evolutionary uh, theories and all that. Now, Charles Darwin said something that is not the strongest of species that survive, nor is it the most intelligent, but he said it is the one that is most adaptable to change. You see, times change, even we've been hearing climate change and all that. If you don't have what it takes inside you to, to blend and withstand. For example, it's raining, okay? And you are water, whatever. You, you, you fear water, okay? And you don't adapt by getting an umbrella, okay? Adaptability is informed. So if I say adaptability, I'm not necessarily meaning that you must change your body to be able to uh, take the rain. Well, that is another form, actually a higher form. But in this form of adaptability, it has to do with 
bringing out, changing, not necessarily even, but changing your activities and all that you do to suit in order to succeed. You understand? Let me not dwell too much on that. And also, the corking relating to adaptability also comes with, refer, um, with reference to repair to obstination. Now, what do I mean by that? Before I come there, I'm a little kind of, uh, kind of a student of Hebrew, and I'm really interested in some things in the Hebrew language. So I decided to, to find out what a corker actually is in the Hebrew language. Okay. And Hebrew, if you are a language uh, student, you understand that Hebrew is one of the richest languages in, in the world. Hebrew, Greek, Latin, those languages, even, let, let's not move into that, let's talk. <laughs> okay, but now with the richness of this language, it breaks it down and opens up what the word coca means, okay? So if you see on your right, if you look on your right, you can see that the word coca has to do with chazak there in Hebrew. And there are a lot of things, I can't talk about all of them, but corking has to do with fastening, okay? Has to do with strengthening, okay? Has to do with repairing onto obstination, has to do with binding, restraining, and conquering, okay? It has to do with constancy, has to do with constraint, has to do with being established, withstanding, behaving self valiantly, like it cannot be shaken. That's why I like that term, all weather, no matter what hits, it's yeah. Now with that, so from this, I picked the term repair to obstination because sometimes your adaptability might not be strong enough to withstand whatever that comes your way. But your adaptability should at least, if it cannot withstand, it should at least be able to bring you back even when you are hit. Do you understand? For example, somebody will place himself in a position such that he adapts to whatever weather that comes so he cannot forsake. But probably you don't, you or you, you've not mastered that act of adaptability to that extent. And so when the weather changes or something, you are likely to fall sick. But how do you bounce back? It takes adaptability to bounce back like that. Okay, that, so that is what I mean by that. With that being clear, I would move to talk about some few things about the life of an adaptable person, because I really want you to get this thing, adaptability. With adaptability, okay, one great man said that he thinks that the more adaptable we are, the more the chance we have, okay, of getting through, of succeeding. The higher your adaptability, the higher you are, you, or you have the chance, the higher the probability of you succeeding in life. I'm telling you, things change, then you change. Things change, then you change. For example, gone are the days where in the job market, they used to look for people that um, had some kind of hard skills, uh, people that know how to talk, people that can yelp, people that, I don't want to talk much about that, but today they are looking for people with certain kinds of skills. For example, people that have at least some knowledge in technology, because where the world is going, that's what is going. So an adaptable person, you see the more adaptable, so if you are, that's somebody who has not changed with the changing system of the world. To acquire what it takes to live currently, you'll be knocked out of the system and you cannot succeed. It's not possible, you cannot succeed. I always say, 
like from from the previous episodes that the future is for those who prepare for it right and last week i added one that the future is also actually for those who make it by adaptability that we do that now let me not dwell much on that also number one i'll give you four things probably i can give you five there are a lot but i just choose four to talk about the first one is that adaptable people see opportunity where others see the law. consider yourself as being on that spot selling as a hawker if they came to sack you and seize your goods what would you have said oh that is it that is all for me where will i get something to feed my children where will i where will i get money to do this where will i get money to do that what what, what am i now going to do no adaptable people don't do that when adaptable people when when anything happens adaptable people immediately they have they see an opportunity to do something again they don't see that they don't stop there at failure they they change in accordance to the situation they will find somewhere to go and sell they will find somewhere let me not dwell too much on that now adaptable people are resourceful when we talk about resourcefulness it talks about your ability to be imaginative to bring up something okay now if you are viewing my screen there's something that i want you to see or know you can write this down that you can take away a person's resource resources okay but you can't take away resourcefulness you can take away a person's resources but you can't take away a person's resourcefulness that is what makes adaptable people successful their resources can go away their money can go you can come and suck them from where they are you can come and torture them you can do whatever you want to do but they will always find another way of doing what they want to do you understand that is what adaptability is about okay that is what an adaptable person is like now the next thing is that adaptable people are proactive you always think ahead and you see that life is changing this way let me do this let me change this way this is likely to happen let me do this this is likely to do this let me do this proactiveness means you anticipate and tap the right behavior, the right attitude, the right character, the right measures to be able to withstand, to be able to cork whatever that comes your way. I hope you are getting me. Then adaptable people don't blame. Okay. If you are a pro proactive person, you don't waste time on blames. You move on you move on it is closely linked to seeing opportunity and not failure don't waste time on saying unnecessary things as a student okay you even I, I believe most of you here are students even if you are not a student you can learn it you even you even need to adapt to the a certain learning style you need to adapt to a certain teaching style okay for certain lectures you know a certain lecturer can see just goes some way 
Another lecture comes, he goes another way. Another lecture comes, he goes another way. Another lecture comes, he goes another way. And you have a lot of different lectures and you want to learn all the courses the same way you learn. For example, if you are an engineering student, I have an engineering background, that's why I'll use that as an example. And then you want to learn comp skills the same way you learn engineering mathematics. Or you want to learn, let me say, you want to learn engineering mathematics the same way you learn comp skills. You are not going to succeed, I'm telling you. You have to learn to adapt to what the course is bringing. You have to learn to place yourself in a position. So you can see a chameleon there. You know, chameleons, when it gets to a certain distance, it can change its color. That is one form and another way of adaptability. It can change its color to suit whatever that is there. So it's currently is green. It will, it's, it's starting to change to brown, to change to the, the color of the tree that it is on. And you will not see it again. It blends with the environment. Okay. Certain animals, I think, I don't know whether it's alligators or something. It, inside the deep seas, those are the Arctic Circle and Antarctica. If you don't know, they just assume it's a cool place. They, they have the ability to go on hibernation in order not to die. When the temperatures get very cold in those temperate uh, zones, it's, it's, it gets very cold, negative, negative of the negative, negative, negative. <laughs> and those animals, they, 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 they hibernate their system and such that they, they, they reduce metabolism and plenty of other things. Or so if you don't have a science background, just try and understand what I'm saying in your, in your own way. For you to succeed in this life, you need to learn to be adaptable. You need to withstand whatever that comes your way. If you will succeed, don't forget this thing. If you will ever succeed, you must be adaptable. Adaptable people are proactive. They think ahead and they set things in place for it to work for them. Thank you very much, Amin. Today's wisdom conference. Sadly, we have come to the end of the third episode and the end of the recaps. Now we're going to move into episode four, not today, but and not this month, next month. We're going to move into episode four. We're going to take another dimension. These first three episodes I did were just recaps, recaps, recap. We now move into the main show. From episode four, everything is going to be new. You wouldn't have heard it before. And even these ones that I did, the recap I did, there are a lot of things that you never would have heard before, even if you were present at the previous, the main show. I want you to take these wisdom conferences very serious. Apply them to your life. And I bet you, you are bound to succeed. You are bound to succeed in whatever that you do. Thanks for joining. You can always reach me on email. My email is there, as you can see on your screen. You can also text me, that's my phone number. And I mean, text message. And you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. It's the Live Wisdom Conference, where things that we learn here, you can apply it to any part of your life. If you are in a relationship, eh, you need adaptability, marital relationship or whatever relationship, even normal friendship. If you are not an adaptable person, you will not have a successful relationship. You can, you can let, you see the things I teach in wisdom conference, you can apply them to anything in life, anything. Marital relationship, you must be adaptable. If you are a leader in leadership, you must be adaptable. If you are a leader and you are not adaptable, if you are an employee and you are not adaptable, 
you will not succeed. You need adaptability in everything you do. If, if you are a pastor or whatever, or maybe you are, you are maybe none of you here is a pastor, but maybe you are, you are looking forward to ministry. You must be adaptable because the God you serve, he, he doesn't move one way. He put you somewhere and if you are not adaptable, you, you can't stay. All right. If you have any questions, I'll take them whilst I introduce my team. The Wisdom Conference, like I always say, I'm not alone. I'm assisted by two strong women. On the right, you see Margaret Annan, she's the head of the public relations and media. And on the left, you see Mami Ekwa Asante. She is the head for the conference management, making sure that this conference comes off. I am the one you see in the middle there with the vision, helping you to succeed in whatever that you are going to do in life and in your career, okay? Well, I see no question. If there's no question, then that brings us to the end of the Wisdom Conference for today. Thank you very much for joining and for participating. Um, I would like you all to serve as my legs to take the Wisdom Conference far. I would want to see many more people join in episode four. Okay. Each and every one of us here, if we decide to invite or speak to these things you are hearing are very important things. And you can imagine if you get somebody you love and talk to the person, and bring the person to come and hear of these things. Okay, if you if you receive something good, that is that will help you to succeed. Why not share with another person? Why not help someone to also succeed? Thank you very much for your time. If you have any question, you can put it on the discussion page, and I will see you next month for episode four. Anticipate. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Bye.